between the words that are spoken and the words that are heard, may God's Spirit be truly present. Amen. From the Book of Lamentations. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become, she that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan, her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? We had that reading from Lamentations at morning prayer on Tuesday, and I immediately thought of the world that stopped in March of 2020 and the place of emptiness and fear that opened up. 18 months of COVID are coming to an end, or are they? We have a long way to go. There's still uncertainty, and that ongoing uncertainty, that ongoing uncertainty, is indicative of the way things have changed permanently for us. We called the season COVID tide. I'm not sure what the seasonal color was, perhaps gray would have been appropriate. And there was no knowing how or when the season would end. But now we have a sense of emerging from that long tunnel. And we feel a need to mourn and to celebrate both. But the mourning comes first. Here at the cathedral in Paris, during the season of All Saints, for 15 days, we are having a season of mourning and celebration, a time to remember and a time to celebrate. And I remember the prayer from the burial office that reads, through the grave and gate of death, we pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Every time I read that, I think, I don't want to go through the grave and gate of death. I would so much rather go around it. But we don't get that choice. That's the way. And that is how Christ leads us. I've always wondered, to be honest, about the folks who turn up here in vast numbers for Easter when there were maybe 40 on Good Friday. Although, in fairness, life brings Good Friday to all of us sooner or later. So we pray that it brings Easter to all of us, too. But we begin with that. We begin with Good Friday. We begin with the morning. And we acknowledge what we have lost. What we have lost. To know the empty city. Most importantly, most painfully, we have lost people, friends, and family. And also, We've lost jobs. We've lost financial security. We've lost plans and projects, trips and gatherings. We've lost celebrations, graduations, weddings, funerals. We've lost community life, social life, hanging on desperately sometimes during this COVID tide by shivering together on a front porch or banging pots at eight o'clock, leaning outside our windows here in Paris so we could do that together. We lost church. And in discovering all the technology that allows us to hear and see each other online, we forgot what it was to touch, to sing, to pass the peace, to share communion together. We lost the certainty that we could be there for people when they needed us or we needed them that we could be at a father's bedside when he was dying, or with a daughter when she gave birth. We lost the everyday joy of eating together and laughing around a table with our friends. And even when these things ended, and some of them at least became possible again, we realized that we had lost a sense of stability, a trust, however unmerited, that things could go on and would go on as they had, that we knew what would happen tomorrow 
or next month or next year and we could make plans and see them through and we lost time a year and a half of it that feels like forever or nothing at all time stretched out endlessly or shrank precipitously or did both maybe we began to perceive that the dimension of time was less rigid than we thought maybe we began to understand time as something flexible and changeable in god's hands and memory memory seems to elude me i can't keep track of time i can't remember what happened in april of 2020 or june or november when did we shut down when did we open up when was there a curfew when did we live stream when did we pre-record when did my wonderful parishioner die when did my goddaughter lose her first tooth? Somewhere in that black void is a year and a half of my life that I can't really account for. And there were days on end when I felt I could do nothing. I couldn't remember what day of the week it was. And the characters on the Netflix series I was watching were more real to me than anyone else. What else did we lose? What did you lose? I struggled with meaning and purpose. I found it easy to pray at first, living here with the empty church that was mine whenever I wanted it. I could come in at midnight to pray. But then I found it hard after some time. The well seemed to dry up. I lost music and singing and Sundays. We recorded the services in bits and pieces, out of order. Walk down the aisle, wait, do it again, check for the drone. No, now do the sermon. Okay, come back and do the gospel. Wait for the spaces for the readings. Now do the Eucharistic prayer. I lost a sense of what we were actually doing. And I kept thinking that when I come back to whatever real life is, one of these days I'm going to stop in the middle of the Sunday service and say, oh, wait, we need to take that again. Lost. What did you lose? Who did you lose? Name it. It's important to name it. Make your own necrology to offer on all saints or at any time of people and places and plans and hopes and security that you have lost. Name your discomfort with this new world that is still amorphous, nebulous, taking shape in ways we can only dimly perceive. Mourn your losses and commend them to God. Only when I began to do that could I begin to refill the well that is God within me? Only when I could say with the poet Gerard Manley Hopkins, O thou Lord of life, send my roots rain, could I acknowledge the emptiness and wait for God to fill it. So mourn, go through Good Friday deliberately, and then, and then remember that we are an Easter people. There will be celebrating. There will be dancing. There will be new hopes and new plans coming to fruition. We will remember, we will know that with God, nothing and no one is ever lost but transformed. And that God is doing a new thing. Do we not perceive it? Now it springs forth. Look for it. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and God shall comfort your heart. To all of us who mourn, that our mourning may be turned to dancing and death to life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.